everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thanks for dropping by my channel. I'm still working with two and a half inch squares because after what I've selected for the block of the month, I still have this many squares left. These are more my traditional fabrics, mostly from, ooh, that one could go in <laughs> block of the month. Pardon me while I pull those out. From my days before I was doing a lot of modern quilts. So I have plenty here and I want to find another way to start using them up. Block of the month still going on. If you haven't checked that out, there's still time to join up. You can check out clue one in my previous video. But I have something in my head today and I'm going to give it a try right before your eyes. That's a little frightening. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to grab some of the more traditional squares, maybe not those, and they'll be deep, rich, earthy kinds of colors for the most part. This was my mom's color palette. She loved earth tones. So I'm going to go with these and I'm planning to do something similar to what I've done with the half square triangles with the slice and splice thing, but I don't want to start out with a square and start doing the slicing and splicing. I want it to be a little less fractured than that and not be quite so much work in working with smaller pieces to make larger pieces. I want to start out with larger pieces and then go to smaller. I'm going to be using, at least for this trial, some bleached muslin. So I want that to contrast with the squares. So I'm gonna pull out any of the white squares. It's all right if the squares have white in them, the off-white's okay. Hmm. Now I'm thinking, should I be doing a cream instead of a white? That's quite possible. I could do white if I don't do the cream colors. <laughs> Let me think about that. In the meantime, I'll take those out. All I'm going to do to begin with is to just start sewing these together in strips. And I'm not going to get too fussed about what goes with what. Hoping the lighting's okay. I'm trying to use natural light as much as I can. I just don't want to put two of the same pattern right next to each other. I'm thinking I need to put in some cream color because I want a little more variety in here. That's looking quite somber to me. And I'm just gonna start sewing those together. I'll be back in a couple of minutes when I have done some of those. So now I have one strip and I'm going to do another strip. I, you can see I've added in a bright spot here. I, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I will need to put some more in to balance that out, but I think it'll be all right. I want to brighten it up a bit and We'll see. So I'm going to do another strip, similar, and I'll be back. I have done a second strip and I have just pressed all the seams in each strip going in one direction. I don't think it matters which direction they are. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But this is all in my head, so we'll see what happens when I actually do it. Throughout this process, I'm going to have lots of decisions I can make, and that's the fun thing about it. I don't even have to make the same decision from one moment to the next when faced with the same situation. Oh, I will also say that one brighter red piece that I had in here, I decided I really wasn't going to like that, so I took it out and just swapped it out here. And I have a broad range of fabrics here, actually. Some Christmas fabrics, looks like Kansas Troubles. I've got... There's a Civil War piece down here. This one is actually a more modern one from my friend Corinne Wells, Rocky Mountain Collection. So just 
trying to get kind of the same vibe or feel throughout this. Now, first decision is how many of these strips do I want to put together before I start slicing and splicing? Just so you know, the block of the month is not about slicing and splicing. <laughs> in case it's looking like I'm a one-trick pony on this. I just really enjoy this process. I think I'm going to start out with sewing two of them together, and I don't want to, for me, I don't want to match up these seams because this is just a free-flowing kind of improvisational sort of piece. If you would like to match up the seams, these seams on both of them are going the same direction. I would just flip this around, and then when I put those together, the seams would butt up against each other. In this case, those two reds would be together, these two would be together. Not sure I'd be crazy about that. Anyway, what I'm going to do though is to shift this a bit. So it's gonna be shift, slice, and splice, I guess. And I can shift it halfway. I can shift it just a little bit. I can shift it more, I think about there. Don't have to be precise. I'm gonna have some hanging out at the top and the bottom, but we'll take care of that later. I'm going to stitch these together and I can either press the seams open, which is always an option, or to one side. I think I'm going to go with one side. I'll be back in a minute. I have indeed pressed this to one side and I have a third decision to make. I didn't really specifically state the first one. The first decision is how long do I want to make this strip? How many squares do I want to use? And that's, there's no given number. I have, what about seven here, two, four, six, eight here, but it doesn't have to be that number. You could make them shorter. You could make them the full length of the quilt, or you can decide as you go, you can make them different lengths. That's the beauty of this. You can just change your mind, do it differently, do it the same, not going to matter. So choice number one was how many squares you're going to use in a strip. Choice number two is how many of these strips you want to put together before you start slicing and splicing. I'm gonna start with two. I don't have to stay with that. Later on, I can put three together. I may do some that's just one. If you are familiar with my half square triangle, videos, my stash busting for those, you'll know that now I'm just going to slice this and splice in some other fabric. I can either go with a, a pretty standard sort of angle like 45, 30, or 60. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more in just a minute. Or I can just do a random slice. If I do it with a specific angle and I continue with that angle, then I can get a very even sort of diagonal look. I could get a chevron knit stitch braid kind of look. I may do that actually with this. This is more traditional fabric and one of my favorite early quilts I made was a pioneer braid and I really like that look, so I'm going to give it that look. But I could easily do any angle I want, and I could change the angle from slice to slice. And I'm going to do it in random places on the strip, probably two places, but I'll do them one at a time. I will just make a slice. This is at a 45 degree angle right there. This is also a good way to practice <laughs> doing random slicing and cutting like this for improvisational piecing if that's kind of uncomfortable for you. You aren't investing in new fabric, you've already got these squares. Now, my next decision, so this is like decision five. This was decision four, what kind of angle I'm going to use. Decision five, I guess, was how regular I'm going to be about it. So this is decision six, and that is how wide am I going to make this splice? And it doesn't matter, and it can change. 
it could be a very narrow splice like that or it could be pretty wide I wouldn't maybe I would go really wide at this point I'm not going to go really wide let's go with about that doesn't have to be precise I'm probably going to change it I don't imagine I'm going to keep it the same width it just isn't in me the 45 degree angle and let's talk about bias and these angles ideally you are going to have straight of grain along this long edge and particularly the edge of the quilt and the way I'm envisioning it this would be the edge of the quilt if you splice if you do a straight cut for your splice and insert it here then you have straight of grain that's controlling this bias you've created with that slice but you're going to have then a bias edge along here and I'm trying to keep that straight of grain if I had a really wide splice like this then I would be more concerned about that strip of bias on the edge. I really want this edge to be well controlled. And the, the shorter the bias length, the, the length of your bias edge, the easier it is going to be to control it so that you don't stretch it so much. So for this narrow, I'm not going to be worried about it. If I were doing a wide stripe, then I would want to have this probably be straight edge, which means I would want to cut a strip the width that I need and then do the diagonal cuts like this. So I would put my 45 here, cut the strip, actually it would be the other way, wouldn't it? 45 here, cut the strip, so that it's going to, you're going to cut this parallelogram here. And that will put this straight of grain. Well, let me just cut a slice here so you can see what I mean. My apologies. I couldn't hear what you said. Thank you, Siri. He's so polite. And this is wider than I would probably use, but let's do, I've got my 45 degree line lined up with this and it's not going to be long enough for this width of strip but I'm going to cut that and then however wide I want that strip to be let's do it this way so I'm not using all of this up and I'm going to say I don't know how wide I want this to be but let's let's go with say three inches be enough for you to see what I'm doing. Let me extend this. If I had a 24 inch ruler, of course, it would have worked better here. Now, if I insert this in here, and this is definitely longer than it needs to be, of course, then I'm doing bias against bias here. So I have to be really careful that I'm not stretching when I'm doing this seam. A walking foot would be perhaps a good idea here. But this is bias here now. If I pull on that, it stretches. And this is straight of grain. So that preserves my straight of grain on the outside and I don't have this wider bias piece that I would be more apt to stretch when I'm sewing there. So if you're going to do very wide, you might want to consider doing that. Pardon me, I have the sneezies, fall allergies. All right, but I'm going to do a fairly narrow one so I can do, I think I'm okay with doing a narrower straight piece cut off this selvage edge and then I'll cut myself I don't know maybe an inch wide do I want it to finish it an inch probably want it to finish it an inch so let's do inch and a half or thereabouts as long as it's straight I don't care I think I do want it to be an even width I don't want to do any 
funny cutting, at least at this point. Maybe later on I will, but for now, I'm just going to splice this in here. And now I can start to see whether or not I'm going to like that white as opposed to green. It might all be, be all right, actually. So I'm gonna sew on the first one and I wanna make sure that when I sew it, I am going to give it enough room to trim it there. So I've got a long enough slice. I'm just gonna give it a little on each edge and I'll be back when I've sewed that. And notice I've got straight of grain against this bias edge, which is a good thing. It's gonna to help to control that bias. I have pressed the seam toward the darker. If I pressed it toward the white, it would shadow through too much. In general, I'm more in favor of pressing toward the splice because it helps to lift it off a little bit, but I don't wanna do a lot of trimming to avoid that shadow. So I'm going to press toward the darker. And now it's time to add this on. And you'll see I've got lots of choices here about where I'm going to place this. And that's the tricky part because once you sew the seam, you want this edge to line up. And to do that, I generally sort of put it about there so that it lines up and that this seam lines up and then flip it over. Then you can also grab a couple of pins until you get the hang of eyeballing this and put a pin in at a quarter inch. You aren't going to sew with this pin in, so it's all right to put it parallel to the seam here. This is just testing your seam. I think it might have a little more. Nope, looks about right. Now, if I pull it back, is it going to line up? And it isn't quite. So I know that I need to shift it a little bit that way. And once you do this, you'll get the hang of it and you'll be better off. You can also just pull it back quarter of an inch. See how that's, and that looks better. So let's give it a go. And that turned out pretty well, actually. It lines up quite well. I'm running into a really bulky seam intersection there. But I think it's going to be all right. And you can see my seam lines up pretty well there. My edges are going to line up pretty well. And now I can trim along that edge. I will have that bit of bias on the edge but it's a pretty small stretch of bias. I will, however, remember to be aware of that bias when I am, oops, sewing these together. And there is one splice. I can leave it at one splice and go on and do another pair. I could go on and do three and do the slice and splice. I could make the next one shorter. In, sh in short, <laughs> you could make all kinds of decisions about this all different ways and it will all come together in the end you can piece them together as you would blocks of uneven sizes you could make these into blocks you could keep them as long strips you could do a couple of shorter strips but still pretty long there are all sorts of choices for how you could put this together so i'm going to do a couple more pieces then come back and we'll talk about some decisions going forward with this. Breaking news. I've been rethinking this decision of making sure this lines up for two reasons. One is that it takes extra time to do that and I wanted this to be a 
quick but really fun way of putting these two and a half inch squares together. And secondly, because I'm using more traditional fabrics, I wanted this to have a more traditional look, which means that these would be lined up. However, and especially if you're using more modern fabrics, you may wish to just do it, sew these together willy-nilly without worrying about matching up these seams. And I don't mean willy-nilly in a bad way. I like willy-nilly. But recognize that you're then going to have to trim that off if you want this to be a straight edge. And then you're also going to have to trim that off to compensate. So you're going to lose width on this section, the strips on this section. If I were to do another slice, and I'm still staying with the 45 just because that's what I'm doing on my quilt and I may work this into mine somehow or other. If I were to put in another slice here and another splice, I would want to move this one so that it matches with down here so I'm not slicing off more. So for example, if I pull this down this direction when I add in the splice, then I'm going to be cutting still more off of this edge. So I'm already cutting off this much from the previous splice, but then I'm going to have to cut off even more. So if this slides up this direction, then I'm not going to have to, it'll be a little more than that, I'm not going to have to slice off so much more over on this side. Does that make sense? So let me put a splice in here and we'll see if that works in reality. I have moved this one quite a bit, as you can tell. And although I have moved it quite a bit, I moved it this direction so that when I'm trimming this off, it's also what I'm trimming down here so it's less wasted cut off. And then over here, Again, I'm cutting off less than if I had slid this piece this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. The disadvantage, if you consider it a disadvantage, and you may not, is that these strips are going to be different widths now and narrower. You're creating more scraps, but probably not of a size you're inclined to use. And now I have a more willy-nilly look, which is kind of fun. Might be more appropriate for modern fabrics, but I'm already putting a little touch of modern with the white in here. is isn't exactly trad as the... Irish would say, traditional. All right, let me put these together just so you can get some idea of how it might look. I could also flip it so that I've got the dark next to the light. Now I could do some of them if I want their traditional braid look, and I think I do, although I may be changing my mind, <laughs> then I would of course, slice some that are going this direction instead of that direction, so I get that V shape. Of course, I always have the option, which I will probably do, <clears throat> to put a sashing in between the strips. Oh, now it looks... You could also do, if you want to go this direction, you could all also make this look sort of like a tree with, oh, you know what? Ooh. Would be kind of cool to, if you want to use these more traditional fabrics, <clears throat> excuse me, but save dark browns for, hmm, for the trunk and the branches. So, 
<laughs> so I'd have this one going this way. I'd have branches going up here, branches of different widths. And actually, after I slice one of these, I could then slice and splice again before I put those two together. Ooh, I'm liking that idea. So that's a possibility. That Maybe what I end up doing. I have some squares in pairs ready to put together another uh, set of eight square the eight square strips and have three of them but I'm kind of rethinking here and I think it's sorry right, time out for a coughing fit brought to you by fall allergies I will probably I think I'm going to pursue that tree idea and I well, actually this is, is going to be okay. I can use the dark brown for the trunk. I could even use a black if I wanted to, or just a really, really deep brown. And I could still have browns, though I might stay away from the really, the darker browns at this point. Blue could be the sky. Of course, I could probably will do more greens for leaves although this is kind of a wintry look, isn't it? A warm, wintry look, so maybe more, I don't know. Interesting. All right, I will do that later. <laughs> if you are wanting to go with <clears throat> something different than the tree option, I think this will still show you what ideas you might do. You could not do the sashing and just start putting the strips together. You could do them with different widths of strips where you've done this willy-nilly and trimmed off the two sides. You could combine them. <clears throat> Excuse me, you could start doing different widths here. You could do all kinds of funky angles. If you're using, particularly using modern fabrics or very bright fabrics, I think that would work especially well. Still okay with traditional. I'm. I'm all right with that. Or you could put the sashing in. You could make these, as I said, the full length of the quilt and just have a strip quilt. Or you could create blocks and they don't have to be blocks of the same size. You could sew these together. You're of course going to have to square up ends, whatever you do. If you create blocks, you're going to have more ends to square up. Your blocks don't have to be the same dimensions. You can fit them together, such as I have done with the, in the half square triangles, or like you do with orphan blocks. There are lots and lots of choices here. This, this really is kind of a fun effect with the offset here. I like that. Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I have these that I was going to put together into a three strip set. I think I'm going to try that. Slice it in the opposite direction. Opposite direction. This is the, the correct direction I want. And see about doing that splice within a splice. See how that looks. I'll do it probably with just a two strip width. I'll be back. Talk amongst yourselves. Here's my plan. I have sliced this in the opposite direction so I get that branching idea there. And now I want to create a branch off that branch. If I'm looking at it this way. I could have a branch going this way off of it or a branch going that way. 
If I do it this way at this point, it's going to run into the trunk. Anyway, I'm going to try it right here and just see how it works. I may hate it. We don't know. And I did that at a random angle. So the first piece I need to slice is right here. And then I'll splice that. Cut a piece here to splice and I'll be back. Of course, anytime that I splice willy nilly, I need to do some trimming before I splice it back onto here. Or do I? I should perhaps wait until I get that splice in. All right, I'm going to trim this and get started on the next splice, and then I'll be back. I am going to have to do a little bit of trimming. I didn't go completely willy-nilly on this, so I won't need as much trimming as if I had gone a little crazier with that. So I want to make sure this is staying somewhat straight. there I have a splice within a splice and of course I could do another splice there if this were our tree I want to go this way nope that's not how a tree looks Karen <laughs> we'll go this way and if I put in the trunk here and of course, you may decide you don't want to do a tree at all. Not entirely sure. I will. I'm just exploring ideas here. And imagine that as dark brown. Then you have branches going up. I might do another branch going up there, although I would have to unsew that, but that's not a, a huge problem. If I do that, though, I have to think about this, because if I do that, if it goes over to here, then that's connected to the trunk. So I would almost need to do it, what do you think, like almost straight up there. It might best be done at an edge. So many things to think about. And we now have tried the sub-splicing. I feel like I'm in a genetics lab or a science fiction movie or something, splicing and sub-splicing. That's kind of a fun effect. Again, if you're doing modern fabrics, that might be a lot of fun to just be slicing willy-nilly, splicing willy-nilly. Things to think about. I've spent more time trying this out this morning than I had planned to do, but I'm glad that I did because it's been a lot of fun. And more options and ideas than were rolling around in my head. So I'm glad I sat down and played with it. That's the advantage of just taking some time to play with things. And with two and a half inch squares coming out of your stash, it isn't as if you spend a boatload of money on some yardage and find out that you didn't want to do it that way. That's it for me today. I'm going to spend some more time playing with this. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm, I'm glad you joined me for this. And I hope I will see you next time. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I also hope that I will see you for the mystery quilt. And clue number two will be up, should be on Sunday. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, be well, be happy, be quilting, peace out.